the roll queue beta will impact your rank going into next season. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the channel. I am Stylosa. So this has been something we've been really confused on for the last couple of weeks. Now, there was a post by Wyoming Miss. Now, he's an MVP on the forums. I've actually met him. He's a really nice guy. He puts loads of effort into the forums. He's like one of the community superstars. He helps people out with tech issues and all kinds of stuff. He's really active on the forums. Well, he posted a kind of a little ditty and sort of said, yeah, you know, it's a beta season, so it doesn't matter, whatever. Now, nobody corrected this, so people kind of took this as gospel. Now, Blizzard could have come out and said, hey, this is not correct. Um, actually, this is going to happen. But they never did until, well, yesterday, which is like, well, that's um, that's kind of leaving it a little bit late, isn't it? Because the Roll Q beta season is almost finished, and a lot of people out there maybe haven't been trying because it's like, well, it doesn't matter. And I may have actually said in videos, well, it kind of doesn't matter, guys. So you can experiment, you can try different things. Turns out, though, it does matter, and this is going to affect where you place in Season 18. Okay, let's take a look at this, because we've got a massive post from Scott Mercer. Now, Scott Mercer uh, is one of the designers of Overwatch, but he heavily works on the matchmaking system. You could argue the most complicated aspect of the entire game it is ridiculous. So what we're going to do is break this post down and take a look at what's going on. But the first thing I want to do is just drop this bombshell, because this is essentially what I've just said. Check this out. The results of your matches in the Roll Queue beta are not being thrown out and will be used by the matchmaking systems to help determine your skill in Season 18. What the blog post was trying to explain is that, we'll get onto the blog post in a second guys, don't worry, is that the Roll Queue beta season starts in your player stats, sorry, in your player profile will only be available for a limited time and they will not be added to your career competitive totals that you can see when you choose all competitive seasons in your career stats. So there we have it, guys. It will affect what's going to happen next season. Now, I think if you, let's say you're currently at 3.6K for DPS. If you don't play again, and that's just the rank that you end at, I reckon after you do your five placement games, you will be around 3.6K again. That's probably what will happen. So this, of course, means if you've been throwing matches or something, you've got really low ranks or God knows what, you're probably going to have that going into next season, which is going to be quite strange and it might take some time to fix, of course, if that happens. So let's take a look at what Scott says here. The primary goal of this feature has always been to increase the quality of Overwatch matches and it's been great to see so much positive feedback about match quality in the Roll Queue world. Creating high quality online multiplayer games of Overwatch and multiple components of Roll Queue has helped us do this in important in several important ways. Okay, cool. Well, we knew this was going to give us better quality games and it has because we get to play the role we want to play. So that's cool. So he says, we believe the most exciting fun games are between players of similar skill. Roll Queue allows us to track your skill with the three roles separate. So when you play as a 2100 SR tank, we try to match you with a 2100 SR damage and support players, both on your team and on the enemy team. We can't guarantee that all your games will be super close 3-2 games that ended in overtime. Stompy games sometimes happen even with great matchmaking and well-balanced teams. Improving our skill-based matchmaking with Roll Queue has been a clear net positive for match fairness so far. We've also seen feedback from players who enjoy having their three separate SRs. Uh, as goals drive personal improvement. And yes, this is something we've always asked for, isn't, haven't it really? Uh, isn't it really, guys? I've always asked for this. Um, and, and for those reasons, basically, it makes the game a more enjoyable game. And you can't argue with that. But there are issues, isn't there, with, with Roll Queue, namely, well, the queue times. And I guess we should probably get onto that. So, big question. Why are the queue times for damage role players so high? Oh, dear. Okay. So this is what Scott says. We're monitoring the data very closely, and I can share some information here. Across all skill ranks, we do see higher queue times for players who specifically queue for damage only. Most damage players usually see a three to six minute queue, unless they're in the masters or grandmaster skill tiers. Players with very high SR will always see higher queue times because there's fewer players of similar skill to match against them. But we've seen reports and have data showing that some players are waiting 20 to 30 minutes. And actually, guys, it's, it could be over an hour for some players. It's, it's just ridiculous, that is. But for the really highest level players. We're investigating this and are already working on some matchmaker adjustments for future updates to help address the issue. If you can find a friend who plays tank or support, queuing together as a damaged tank or damaged support duo drastically reduces the queue times you'll face. So there you go. What he's basically saying is it's impossible to fix that at the highest level of the ladder and also at the lowest level, but a way to get around it is to queue with a tank friend or a support friend. 
Um, and then you'll probably get games much quicker. And it does work like that. I've noticed a lot of top streamers generally get games much quicker. You know, literally they go down from 40, 50 minute queues to two minute queues, three minute queues. So it's much better. I mean, for me and Masters uh, on DPS, where I've played most of the time in the roll queue, I think, you know, I, I generally get about, I think I said on average about eight minutes, maybe 10 minute queues. Sometimes I've seen it go over 18 minutes, but that's kind of rare. It depends at the time of day you're playing as well. So it's good that they're looking into this. In terms of matchmaker changes they could do to, well, reduce the queue, I mean, that's it, that's almost impossible, right? Because if you don't have enough players of the skill level, then you can't really just invent them. You get what I'm saying, guys? I don't know. Cool stuff. So what about this bombshell then? Why are damage roll players getting unfairly blamed for losses? Now this, <laughs> yeah, let's just read what Scott says here. This is funny. This happens all the time. But I think this is just like people moan at DPS and it's, that's just always going to happen. So check this out. Now that the team composition, in fact, let me just explain why people moan at DPS. Look at Tank. Tank is a role that is designed to um, like protect the team, to uh, kind of be at the front line. Like the, the whole point of the role is you're for the team. Then you look at support, you'll keep the team alive. Then you look at damage where you just do your own thing and try and kill the enemy. So in a way, support and tanks are always going to be seen as like the heroes of the team. And DPS, you only notice them if they're not doing their job, which is kind of sad. Anyway, this is what Scott says. Why are damage role players getting unfairly blamed for losses? Now that the team composition is not an easy reason to blame for a team's loss, I've seen community feedback and even players in my own games feel that they're losing because no one on the enemy team is dying. Then they blame the players in the damage role. Everybody should always remember that Overwatch is a team game and everyone is responsible for the team's success. Losing a game doesn't mean that your team necessarily played particularly poorly. It might just mean that the other team played particularly well that game. Winning or losing often comes down to who made one more big play. If you're trying to improve your level of play over time, blaming a teammate for a loss doesn't help. Yeah, no, it, it really doesn't. Instead, ask yourself, is there a lesson you can take away from the match, win or loss, that will help you improve in the next one? Similarly, if a game uh, before a game starts, think about what aspect of the game you can work towards improving. So yeah, uh, it's basically what I said, but in a more eloquent way of doing it and less of like, yeah, my DPS are bad, <laughs> get them out of here, but hey, whatever. Okay, so what about if you receive an SR that was too high or too low after placements on a specific role? Let's, uh, let's take a look at this. So Scott says this, if you're a new player, placements are straightforward. You start at a new player baseline SR, and when you win games, your SR goes up, and losing games, your SR goes down. Okay, cool, that's fine. But if you're a returning player, placements are still simple. Instead of starting you at a new player SR, I wonder what that is, you know, but and it, maybe it's like 2K or something. I don't know. We start you at a historic baseline SR that covers more time than just the previous season. Your SR then changes as you play your placements, but since you're not a new player, we use the base variance level. This means that you are unlikely to see radical changes in SR from one season to the next. And this is one of the reasons, guys, why we tend to moan a lot about what's the point of placements if they, if they do this. It's, they kind of feel like pointless in a way because I've already got your stats you may as well just carry on you know what I mean anyway this means that you're unlikely to see radical changes in SR from one season to the next but that reflects the fact that your actual skill at playing Overwatch doesn't radically change either which is fair we've actually tried in a few seasons doing something that amounts to a partial SR reset across seasons but the results were pretty horrible when you queue for a match with an SR that doesn't accurately reflect your skill the quality of the match drops tremendously therefore we try to quickly change your SR as a new player to more accurately determine your SR, and we can't ever really consider implementing a full SR reset. Match quality would be harmed for months until everybody played a lot of games and the matchmaker could properly identify everyone's skill. So that's essentially them saying, look, we'll never reset the SR. There will never be an MMR SR style reset for Overwatch because they've kind of tried it and it was terrible. But yeah, it would be terrible for a long time as it sort of works everyone's ranks out again. Because I mean, you think, you think about it, you'd have like, master players going into games with like silver players it just would be crazy until the system worked out where they should be okay so now he wants to talk about placements in the role queue world to help us seed your role sr after initially completing placements we've been tracking your match results as you play the three different roles for several months okay cool so it isn't just the role queue beta they've been tracking this for a few months fair enough i think they actually said that before but hey it's nice to have it confirmed 
What we want to help identify your, uh, we want to help identify your skill at each role so we can place you at the SR that reflects that skill. If we do a good job at that, you'll immediately start playing in fairer matches. The more inaccurate we are, the more games you'll have to play on that role until your SR can adjust properly to reflect your skill. This also means that the more games you played on each role, the more accurate we can determine your new SR. So what about the Roll Q beta? Like, how well has this actually performed? Well, this is what Scott says. We appear to uh, we appear with the Roll Q beta to have done a decent job overall with seeding, but of course there will always be exceptions. We're already looking at making some adjustments to the formulas to better match the live data we've been seeing, such as temporarily increasing variance and being more aggressive with our adjustment for roles with prior data. Okay, fair enough. So that just means if they've got information on you, then they'll maybe adjust you a bit quicker. So if you do think your place a bit low and maybe you shouldn't be there, it might start adjusting you higher quicker or even adjusting you lower quicker. Again, it just completely depends on the stats and the way the system has recorded your sort of player history. This is interesting as well because they do, well, Scott does say, we saw a few reports from very high skilled players who were incredulous that they seeded so high at an off roll. But then when we looked and they had performed well on that off roll in a significant number of games in the past, when we seeded their role SR, we use that prior data. Something else to remember is that we as humans are not particularly good at identifying our own skill at something. This is referred to as the Dunning-Kruger effect. And if you're curious to learn more, feel free to use your favorite search engine on that term. So that's interesting, right? Because XQC was the one um, kicking up a lot of fuss. In fact, I made a video on this as well. Um, but it was, well, not kicking up fuss, but basically saying I should not be this rank uh, of support or I should not be this rank of DPS because I'm like a 4.5k rated tank, but clearly they're saying you should be because actually when we have tracked your stats on those uh, roles, you are performing at the level you should be. So that's a really interesting takeaway. It's almost like um, when I've gone back and said, it's weird because I always thought I was like a tank player. I'd have said I was a tank player, but actually I, I want to play DPS more than tank. It's weird as hell. And that's only really come around because of roll queue. So even then I thought I was a tank player, but really I was a damage player. It's weird. It's, it's so weird. Anyway, let's, let, let's crack on and just wrap this up. So Scott says to end this massively detailed blog post, in the end, the best way for you to improve a matchmaker's ability to place you with other people of similar skill is to just keep playing, which is fair enough, right? Just keep playing. You'll sometimes have some lucky win streaks or unlucky streaks of losses, but you'll keep playing. But if you keep playing, your SR will continually adjust to reflect your present skill and your your play uh, in better games, which is fair enough. Like the more you play, the more data they get, the better profile they can build, the better matchmaking they can do, etc. And then he goes on to say that, yeah, sure, we're excited to see your feedback for Roll Queue. It's been very helpful. Um, so far, there's a lot of exciting changes to come and said to them first, season 18 of competitive play begins. And we'll introduce role play, uh, introduce role queue into quick play. Uh, we'll closely monitor queue times and match quality and all that stuff. So yeah, there you go, guys. I just wanted to make this video because it is important to realize that they are basing some of your um, rank going into the placement into next season, into season 18, off the current um, roll queue beta. So if you have been throwing games, maybe go in and try and unthrow some games. I don't know. Um, but yeah, a pretty detailed post there. It's good that they're looking at queue times. It's good that they're looking at other bits and pieces as well. And it's nice to have a bit of an explanation as to why they would never do an MMR or SR reset. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Salos from This Unit Lost. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember you can like the video. Liking the video helps an absolute ton. I can't explain to you guys how much that helps. Like, it's just ridiculous. If you like it, do like it, but only if you like it. Don't just like it because I've told you to. Oh, maybe just do that anyway. <laughs> Also, you can subscribe and tap the bell. You get alerts when videos go live. And that's about it, guys. And I'll catch you lovely lot on the next one. Toodaloo.